Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Fred McMurray and Madeline Carroll in Invitation to Happiness. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Great drama has been fought inside the roped square of the prize ring. And behind such drama, there's often a moving story, never imagined by the spectators. It may be a brutal story, or it may be tenderly human, like tonight's play, Invitation to Happiness. In the Lux Radio Theater, this title really has a special meaning. In fact, one lovely member of our audience says it might be a statement about our product, because Lux Toilet Soap is an invitation to happiness for every woman. But tonight's invitation to happiness is the highly personal story of a real man, a story that only a few people know about a prize fighter named King Cole, a story that was never printed on the front pages nor told over the radio, a story that involves the woman who loved him, the son who hated him, and emotions that were too strong even for a strong man who lived by his fists. It was Fred McMurray who played King Cole in the recent Paramount picture based on an original story by Mark Jerome. When I met Fred in the studio gymnasium a few weeks ago, <laughs> before I caught this cold, it reminded me that that invitation to happiness was on our schedule waiting for a date. We set the date during a handball session. And as I was leaving, Fred picked up some boxing gloves. But he explained that he had a date with another producer. And, I quote Fred, a producer who was a sucker for a left hook. Since Invitation to Happiness is far more than, than the story of a prize fighter, our casting problem involved the choice of a leading lady who must be sympathetic and definitely a lady. That gave us a chance to reunite Fred McMurray and Madeline Carroll in the Lux Radio Theater because I don't know anyone who fits the role of a lady more convincingly than Miss Carroll. These two stars have been teamed recently by Paramount with very happy results. But their first appearance was at our microphone. Let's lift a few years now from the private life of King Cole, the heavyweight challenger. The years when he was fighting for the championship and forgetting the woman he loved. The curtain goes up on Act One of Invitation to Happiness. Starring Fred McMurray as King Cole and Madeline Carroll as Eleanor. New York City, 1927. Just across the river from the twinkling lights of Manhattan stands the Queen's Sports Arena, where there's a prize fight every Wednesday night. Next event, four rounds. King Cole at 196. Mike Elliott Heath at 203. Down the aisle to ring sign seats, come Eleanor Wayne, wealthy young society girl, and her distinguished white-haired father. Uh, it's just a Donna Front. Donna Front! What's the matter with that fellow? What are you yelling about? I guess he wants you to sit down, my dear. <laughs> hey, I got the other gentleman. Donna Front! Donna Front! Oh, keep quiet! Eleanor, please. I'm afraid I shouldn't have brought you here. Why well, not? I'm not complaining, Dad. I'm having fun. Well, sit down, darling, and please don't get into any arguments. <laughs> It's a knockout. The fight's over. A knockout? But we didn't even see it. Who got knocked out? King Cole? No, the other fellow. King Cole's the winner. Come on, we've got to get out of here. Oh, Dad, what's the matter with you? Aren't we even going to see one fight? Not tonight. I've got to talk some business. Business? With whom? With King Cole and his manager. Come on, my dear. Hang on to my arm. All right. Yeah. They said they'd meet us here right after the fight. Uh, just coffee, waiter. Listen to me. Uh, yes, my dear. Dad, you're not really going to buy a prize fighter. Uh, certainly not. Just half. Half a prize fighter. You're crazy. Oh, I can afford to be a little crazy, can't I? Take all the things you know absolutely nothing about, put them in one great big pile, and right in the middle will be half a prize fighter. Dad, I'm not going to let you do it. Now, listen, Eleanor. 
King Cole is the best heavyweight prospect in the country. Mm, you're just quoting someone, some swindler who's after your money. No, Hank. Uh, Hank Hardy's uh, as honest as they make him. And who's Hank Hardy? Manager and trainer of King Cole. He picked the king up in Chicago. They've been trying to break into New York for months, taking whatever club fights they could get for a few dollars. Yeah, and now they're going to take you for plenty. Eleanor, for heaven's sake. Daddy, it's almost interesting, but I'm very happy I insisted on coming with you tonight. Somebody has to keep an eye on you every minute. Eleanor, I want you to understand that I am now of age and I will not tolerate any interference from you in my business affairs. Is that final? Yes, that's final. What makes you think so? Uh, nothing. I was just hoping. <laughs> well, where is this future uh, champion of the world, anyway? Well, Hank has to give him a rub down before he gets dressed, you know. Oh, yes, 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 of course. You know, you talk just as if you knew something about it. Okay, King. Come on, slip into your pants and make it snappy. Hey, what's the rush? The fight's over? Hey, close that door, somebody. Come on, hurry up, will you, King? Hey, wait a minute, will you, Hank? Hey, uh, ain't you going to see Billy about another fight here? No, come on. Why not? You've kicked around the clubs long enough, kid. Next fight's going to be in big time. Yeah? What do we use for hamburgers while we're waiting? Oh, just the $2,000 I'm getting tonight. $2,000? Sure. We're going to a training camp. Get you in shape for traveling 10 or 15 rounds. Teach you some of the smart points of the game. How's it sound, eh? Uh, sounds cute. <laughs> Where are you going to get 2000 bucks? I, uh, I'm selling half interest in your contract, kid. Oh, no, it's the only way we'll ever get any place. Look, son, you're burning yourself up knocking out pork and beaners for chicken feed. Maybe you'll last a couple of years that way. Then what? Oh, Hank, this is supposed to be a personal setup between you and me. So far, we've been pulling in our belts without squawking. Let's keep on going the hard way, too. I'm going to make huh? you a champ the only way. Yeah? Even if you get sore. Okay. Let's go meet the bankroll. Sorry, we kept you waiting. Uh, this is King Cole. King, this is Mr. Wayne. It's oh, a yeah. pleasure. Hank, this is my daughter, Eleanor, Mr. Hardy, and King Cole. How do you do? How do you do? I didn't know you. Well, Hank, I... Uh, just uh... a moment, Dad. Perhaps I should explain to you gentlemen that I'm here to look out for Dad's interest. He knows nothing whatsoever about the fight uh, um, industry. Eleanor? I I'm as much a part of the deal as he is. A woman don't belong around a prize fighter, Miss Wayne. What do you mean that? Well, they're bad for a fighter. I mean that... Uh... Listen, if you're hinting, Mr. Hardy, that I have any ulterior motive towards your beautiful young gentleman, I can assure well, you... what that... is this? He's not hinting anything, Eleanor. Go on, Hank. Well, if you're still interested, Mr. Wayne, I figured on taking Cole up the lakes for a month or so to harden him up, and then... Uh... Uh, what does he weigh now? Hey, wait a minute. Why do you ask him what I weigh? I can talk. What do you think you're buying, a steak? King, stop it. How tall is he, Mr. Hardy? Say, if this is your idea or something, you can have it. I'm not going to sit here and listen to Lady Richbuck's horn in. She's had everything she yelled for all her life, and she shows it. And that's the kind of dame I can't stand. Hey, come back here. Come back. Eleanor. Eleanor. Hey, taxi. Riverside Drive and step on it. Okay. Come back. You hear me? Come back, you. You can't talk. Taxi. Taxi. Yeah, miss? Here, follow that cab. Don't let him out of your sight. Okay. There's your man, miss, sitting over there on the bench. Thanks. Wait for me, will you? Listen, you. What do you want? I don't want anything from you. Then what'd you follow me here for? I, I just wanted to tell you that nobody has ever talked to me the way you did. So what? You were very insulting, Mr. Cole. I didn't insult anybody. All I want is for people to mind their own business. Well, there's no reason to call me a snob. I never said snob in my life. Well, you just as much as said it. You were very unfair. Unfair? When you and your old man were slicing me up like a pie? You know, I bet you'd be surprised if you knew why you really was here. Would I? Well, uh, maybe you think I'm bragging, but I know plenty about women. Congratulations. Mm. Especially when they follow me around to tell me how much they don't like me. And I know they're falling hard. <gasps> I ought to slap your face. I'm not kidding. There's a blonde in the nightclub, see? Harry's nightclub. She sings and she can't sing for sour apples. But when I walk into Harry's, the band plays Old King Cole, just like she tells him to. And she takes my arm and leads me to a table. Who asked about your blonde? I'm telling you. A guy in my business can learn a lot. Because when a woman loves a fighter, she loves a man. And those are the ones that show you how it is with all women. And what about me? You know by now. With all your class and fine clothes, you're still a woman. And there's something about me that's got you. 
Once a dame slapped my face like that in Chicago and I picked her up and threw her in a fish pond. Go ahead and throw. Throw me into the river. Don't worry. I'm not sore anymore because I feel sorry for you. And you're a lady and I'm a mug and I know where I belong. Come on, sit down. I'll tell you something just to show you there's no hard feelings, huh? Uh, what? You know, it's a funny thing. Ever since I came to New York, I kind of figured this was my own private bench. I should never come here except the night before a fight. I didn't realize I was trespassing. I discovered it the night before my first fight in New York, and uh, I've been using it ever since. I'm walking around, see, and I got an edge like a razor. And I come here, and I look across the river there, right into the lights, and I see a woman, a sleeping woman. Over there on the palisade? Yeah. That's all I need, just to see her sleeping. By the way, my muscles loosen up and I get relaxed. And I go home and sleep, just like she's sleeping. And the next morning, I wake up all fresh and clean like a baby. And I can step on a ring and look any man alive. I'm still not bragging. You're a strange person. First, you're, you're the way you were, and, and now the way you build romance around your work. I always thought prize fighters were men with no foreheads and snorting noses. Yeah? Well, i better get going. To meet your blonde, I suppose. That's right. You know, I wish I had the nerve to fall for you. You're a swell dish. That's sweet of you. You can kid all you want, but take a tip. I'm bad news for you if you keep thinking about me. Oh, go on and meet your blonde. Don't worry about me. Well, for your sake, I hope your old man doesn't buy half my half me. I hope so, too. Good night. Uh... Morning, Eleanor. You're down early. Morning, Dad. Had your breakfast? Just finished. I suppose you went through with that silly deal last night. Yes, I did. And it's not silly. It's the worst investment you ever made. What makes you think so? Well, he's... He's conceited. He's impossible. Goes to nightclubs and, and runs around with cheap blondes. How did you find that out? Oh, I was... Uh, oh, I'm watching out for you. That's a lot of finding out to do in one night. Now, listen, Dad. If you ever hint that I'm even slightly interested in that pig-headed pugilist of yours, I'll... Eleanor, I'll, put I'll, down I'll... that grapefruit. Put it down. My, but you're touchy. Where's he going to train? Some nightclub, I suppose. Oh, we're sending him to a camp. When? He and Hardy are leaving today. How long will they be gone? Oh, several weeks. Um, how far away is the camp? I suppose you could drive there in a couple of hours. Why? Oh, nothing. I, <laughs> I was thinking it might be a good idea to take a run up sometime. We've got to protect our investment, you know. Yes, of course. Say, for a girl who's not interested, you say. Certainly... Dad, you know what I say. Uh, no, 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 Eleanor, put it down. My mistake. That's the girl. <laughs> That was a very good dinner. You thank the cook. I will. Who's the camp musician? You can thank the cook for that, too. Say, hey, maybe you'd like to be alone. I can go inside if you'd rather. <laughs> Still got that chip in your shoulder, huh? Seems to me it's your chip. Yeah, forget it. I was a little burned at first when the old man bought in on me, but I don't mind anymore. I gotta admit he's doing plenty for me. This is a swell place. I told him it was the wrong thing to do. It was. What? But last night I stood down there by that practice ring, and all I wanted was Madison Square Garden, and the band was playing my piece. You'd be surprised when that happens. Will you? No. You're always certain about your future, aren't you? Look, I better get you straight about me. When I talk about being champ someday, it's, it's not talking about something I know is going to happen. It's, it's talking about something that's got to happen. Do you see the difference? No. Well, I want you to. Because you already know more, more, more about me than I ever figured to tell any woman. What do I know? Well, for one thing, that there's something hanging over me all the time. The fear of getting licked. That's why I kid myself into seeing a thing like the sleeping woman. Something to tell me I'll be okay. You're afraid of taking a beating? Oh, it's not the licking that bothers me. It's, it's something I don't know about myself. I mean, what would happen to me if I'd found I'd gone as far as I could without being champ? You see what I mean? In a way, I do. It's hard to explain, but I'm living for one thing, to prove to myself I can be champ. And if that doesn't happen? Doesn't it? Well, it'd be like getting to a certain spot and finding that from there on there's nothing. Nothing in the world. When you're living and working for one thing, you... I can't explain it. I think I understand how you feel. And you'll get what you want. I know that. You think so? Yes. You said I was a funny guy. You're funny, too. You better go on inside. Why? Can't you tell? Because I like too much to look at you and be near you. Out here, I'm liable to forget that you're a lady and I'm just a mug. Like right now, I... 
I want to kiss you in any other time I wanted to kiss a woman. You did? Yeah. Yeah. I slapped you once. For less than that. But not this time, huh? No. We're headed for trouble, lady. That's right. Headed for trouble. again and takes a right to the heart. He's looking at coal and supplies, and there goes another to Snell's jaw. Snell is hurt. He goes into a trench, but Cole hammers at him with lefts and rights, and he staggers away. A left to his jaw, a right to his heart, another right, and Snell is down. He's down. The count is six, seven, eight, nine, and the fight is over. It's a knockout for King Cole in the first round in his first fight in Madison Square Garden. I won. Yes, I know. I had it on the radio. You're wonderful. I wish you'd been there. It's better this way. I like trespassing on your own private block of Riverside Drive. Did you come up here last night to see your sleeping lady? Yeah, I saw her. Can't see her tonight, though. Can't see anything but you. Wish I had my arm around you. Like this? Yeah, like this. Oh, lady, why do we keep leading with our chins? I don't know. I'm no good for you. I told you we're headed for trouble. That's right. There's guys on the right side of the tracks that eat off their right hand for you. This is a shame. Yes. Why don't you say something, something to put me straight? I want to, but I can't. This is my fault, and I can't understand why I've done it. I'm supposed to be part of a small circle that lives and dies within the circle, never looking outside, because nothing worthwhile ever happens beyond. We're supposed to be protected by, by two great walls, money and family. That's it. That's what I want to hear. That's what's supposed to be, but... Ever since I can remember, I've wanted to be outside those walls. There was boarding school when I wanted public school. There was a girls' college when I wanted the thrill of being in a state university where the boy beside you waited on tables to pay for the future he was dreaming about. I never got near a university, not even high school. My mother died when I was very little. She wore a ribbon around her throat, and she would have fainted to see you hit a man. My mother scrubbed floors in an office building. See what I mean? But that's wonderful. Look at me. You know what I am. Where's it going to end? Can you see yourself married to me? That's all I can see. Oh, you're crazy. I tell you, you're tossing over everything you were born for. Why don't you help me? Tell me off. Put me in my place. All right, you have a blonde and you're cheap and common. The only way you can live is by your fist. Now you're talking. You meant that too, didn't you? And I love you very much. And when I marry you, it'll be because I want you. Without rhyme or reason, I want you. And I don't care what anyone says or what anyone thinks as long as I'm with you. Oh, honey. I can't argue alone. <laughs> That was the first act of invitation to happiness. Two people from opposite worlds have found each other. How far apart these worlds are, they've yet to learn. While we're waiting for Act Two, our Between the Acts impresario, Mr. Ruick, has a little presentation involving both words and music. Fred McMurray and Madeline Carroll will be back to bring you Act Two of Invitation to Happiness after our short intermission. Oh, Mr. Ruick. Yes, Sally. Do you know which letter of the alphabet appears most often in the English language? Why, the letter E, I believe. That's right. And E is the first letter of a word that appears very often in every good housewife's thoughts, too. E. Could it be economy? Right again. Well, you know, we've been thinking. It's not much fun making both ends meet if you've got the sacrifice quality. So when it comes to the important matter of complexion care, clever women get both economy and quality. They use Lux toilet soap. Musical notes from the register ring when you buy Lux soap. Takes so little money, it makes you feel sunny to buy Lux soap. So the price is the symbol, Lux soap is the symbol of quality care for your skin. The register rings with the bargain it brings. When you buy Lux Soap. Thank you very much, Sally, Irene, and Mary, for reminding our audience that Lux Toilet Soap is as fine a soap as money can buy, and that you can buy it for only a few cents. 
The reason it costs you so little, ladies and gentlemen, is that literally millions of cakes of Lux Toilet Soap are sold to women everywhere who want to take the best care of their skin. That's why, for only a few pennies, you can buy a soap that contains only the finest ingredients. A soap that's laboratory tested for mildness. Lux Toilet Soap is good for your skin. Remember, it's the soap with active lather. I wish you'd buy some Lux Toilet Soap today and notice the smooth surface, the whiteness, and the firmness. Buy some. Get in the habit of using Lux Toilet Soap. And pretty soon, you'll see that here, quality and economy go hand in hand. The register rings with the bargain it brings when you buy Lux Soap. Here's our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Invitation to Happiness, starring Fred McMurray as King Cole and Madeline Carroll as Eleanor. From their bench on Riverside Drive, it was only a short step to a waiting taxicab in which King Cole and Eleanor Wayne were whirled to the home of a friendly judge and onto the front page of every newspaper in the country. Here you are, paper. King Cole works a society file. Eleanor Wayne bride, a heavyweight slugger, paper. In the living room of the Wayne Mansion, the bride's father faces his new son-in-law. Have a seat, Cole. Thanks. I asked Eleanor to wait upstairs while you and I became a little better acquainted. After all, I've thought of you only as a fighter, you know. Sure, that's right. Now tell me, uh, I can't go on calling you Cole, can I? And your first name can't really be King. It's Jim. All right, Jim. First thing I'd like to hear is a little about you as an individual, your family and all that. That's what I thought. There's not much to tell about my people except they worked too hard and died too young. When my old man died, I quit grammar school and went to work in the Chicago stockyards. One day a guy took a swing at me and I swung back and he went down. That's the way I've been hurting my feet ever since. But you can tell your society reporters I never went to reform school and I never went to jail. How do you like them apples? Hmm. Let's see, you weigh 196, don't you? Huh? How tall are you? 6'3". Why? I'm interested in two things. In my daughter's husband as a man and in my daughter's happiness as a wife. I can see you're a man. As for the other, I don't know. I can only hope and ask you to do everything in your power to make it possible. I'm hoping myself. You've got a lot more class than I'm used to. Uh, don't let it worry you. Good luck, son. And now you better go see your wife. I asked her to wait upstairs, but you'll probably find her listening at the door. Dad, that's the most insulting thing I ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dad, I love you. Thanks for everything, darling. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> and now if an old man may be excused, good luck to you too, my dear. Thanks. Oh, King, didn't I tell you? Yeah, he's swell. Well, there's only one thing that's got me worried. What? This layout. It's going to take me a long time to feel like I really belong here. Oh, you belong right now, No, nah, no, nah, there's lots yeah. to learn. Huh? I never noticed before I don't use all the right words or right fork or anything like that. King. But I'm going to learn, see? I'm a little scared now, but I guess I can get used to class, all right? Oh, let's forget that, King. Let's, let's just be ourselves always. Feel what we like and say what we like and, and always be honest with each other, shall we? Okay, lady. That's well with me. <laughs> I'm the one who knows. It's my business to know. And I say the kid's getting softer every day. All right, Hank. Keep your voice down. Okay, then. I'll shut up and let you do the talking. Maybe you'd like to train the kid, too. Hank, cut it out. Let's quit arguing and do something. After all... Well, there. You two kids fighting? Uh, oh, oh, no, no of well, course not. not. Oh, well, that's nice. Peter said you wanted to see me, Dad. Yes. Uh, you see, Eleanor, Hank worked out with King this morning, and he... Uh... Oh, you tell her how he was, Hank. Well, he's all off form. No speed, no wind, nothing, Mrs. Cole. Well, that isn't his fault. The gymnasium took quite a while to build, and I guess I've been taking up a lot of his time. You know he's signed to fight Nicky Ferreira next month? Yes, of course. Well, how would you like to see him get his ears knocked off? What? That's exactly what'll happen to him if I don't get him in shape in a hurry. So, we'll Yes, uh, Hank uh, talked to King this morning about going to training camp, and... Uh, how long? Until the fight. Well, then I'll go, too. Uh, yes, that's just what King said. But it's what I don't say. I don't want you to go, Mrs. Cole. Well, who's asking you? Oh, I wish I knew how to talk to you. Look, a fighter's got work to do, lots of work. He's got to keep his mind on only one thing, and that's winning his next go. They're no good if they can't do that. And a woman... 
Well, a woman gets in her way. Understand? No, I don't. I want you to understand that my married life happens to be my own affair, and I'll do as I oh, wish. for the love of... You mustn't think Hank is meddling, Eleanor. It's only that he hates to see the king, king's hope for the championship spoiled. Especially by a woman who says she loves him. I don't see that. Well, I do, and you ought to take my word for it. Look, Mrs. Cole, you know how much he wants that crown. You know how hard he's worked for it. Why don't you give him a chance? Let him go alone. Well... All right, Hank. When are you leaving? Right now. Thanks. I'll go and tell the kid. Ellen, you've done the right thing, honey. Hank's already thanked you. The same for me. Oh, forget it. But I think I've already put one over on Hank. Put one over? How? I'll let you know. As soon as I'm sure. I played the Jack of Hearts. Oh. Uh, it's your play, honey. Excuse me, Dad. I, I'm not interested tonight. Since when did I become bad company? Oh, be quiet. It's just that I'm used to having a man around. Well, what am I? You're my maiden aunt. It's your play. You know, I think I've just tumbled to what you meant about putting one over on Hank. That's good. We're going to have another fighter in the family, huh? Are we? Well, aren't we? Oh, do I let you know when I'm sure? Uh, well, let's find out about this Mind right... Mind your own business. <laughs> it's still your play. <laughs> yep, we sure put one over on Hank. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are, ladies and gentlemen, at the ringside of the Boston Athletic Club where King Cole meets Kid Sikio in six. We hope sensation around. Mr. Cole has been doing pretty well for himself these days. After finishing Nicky Ferrara last May, he went on to seven successive victories in as many months. Kid Sikio is a favorite. Dad, please with turn it off. What? But the fight's going but to start. Please, Dad. 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 I'm just too nervous tonight, that's all. Well, take it easy, darling. I can't. Not any longer. Do you realize how many times he's been home since he started on tour? Exactly twice in all these months. A fighter has to travel. He can't stay forever in one city. I don't care about fighting. He should be here. Now, above all times, he should be here. Oh, Dad. Eleanor. Eleanor. Yeah? Yeah, this is Hardy. Oh, hello, Wayne. What? Can't get him now. He's on the way to the ring. Yeah, but... Hospital? Oh. Okay, I'll tell him right after the fight. Hello, honey. Hello. I hear you won again. Yeah, that's right. Did you see the baby yet? No, I... I came straight to your room. Well, go look at him. He's very unusual. By special permission of a prize fighter's career. Oh, I know how you feel, honey. The one place I should have been is here tonight. Even weeks ago, I should have been with you, waiting, but... Never mind. But, honey, I... Good night. But, honey... Good night. I don't want to talk to you. Okay, lady. No, Jim, come back. What's the matter? I didn't mean it, honestly, I didn't. Oh, it's my fault. The whole thing. You got a raw deal, lady. All these months I've been alone. Sometimes I was hating you. And I see you and I, I love you more than ever. Oh, cut it out, will you? You let me born like, like I can. That's what I want. Two babies needing me. I wish there was some way to be with you all the time. I thought it would be so easy to hit the top and settle down with the money I earned for you. But I don't know. All a man can do is keep on fighting, fighting and trying. I have to do that. I have to. I know, and, I, and I'll learn to be patient. Because I'll have to admit you're worth waiting for. Only, please don't make the waiting too long. Oh, lady, if you'll just give me a little while longer. Just a little while, that's all I ask. Telegram for Master James Cole, Jr., Wish I could be there when you blow out the three candles. Anyway, three cheers all the way from California. Signed, Dad. Look at the 
five shots, eh? Can you imagine me with a kid that big? Hey, you'll be a heavyweight in a couple of more years. Oh, no, no fighting for that kid. He's a gentleman. And it's taking lots longer than we thought. But I have a feeling I'll be right up on the top in another few months. And we'll be together very soon. Soon. Afternoon, Mother. No, Jimmy. I've got a surprise for you. But, Mother... Your father's coming home, Jimmy. Oh. I knew you'd want to go to the airport to beat him. All right, Mother, but... What? What's the matter? Well, I should be at football practice this afternoon. We're playing the Case Junior Saturday, and really, I should be practicing. This is something very special. Your father's coming home because he's going to fight for the world championship. Why didn't he fight for it before? <laughs> because he couldn't, darling. Anyway, the point is... We haven't seen him for a long time, and he's cut short his tour to come home, and... and Jimmy, will you help to make him happy this time? He's very fond of you, you know. He doesn't care anything about me, or you either. Jimmy. Then why does he leave you alone so much? You don't understand, dear. Your father's doing his work just like any other man. He, he can't help the fact that it keeps him away so much. But you're so lonesome. Even with me, you're lonesome. I want you to be happy, and, and he's spoiling everything. Jimmy. It makes me very unhappy when you talk that way about your father. Listen, you love him just as much as I do, and, and he's going to be champion of the world, and, and, and we're going to be proud of him because, because we love him. Please, Jimmy. Yes, Mother. Well, Jimmy, let's take a look at you. Fine boy, King. Yeah, could stand a little meat on him, though. How's football, son? All right. He's playing the Case Junior Saturday. Isn't that what you said, Jimmy? Uh-huh. Well, King, how did you feel when you got the news about fighting for the championship? Yeah, almost like it couldn't be true. I've lived a long time for this chance. I'm going to be plenty ready when it comes. What are your plans? I figured on going up north to start light training in a couple of weeks. And... But the fight is six months away. Oh, I could use more time than that, lady. I'll need at least three months up north. After that, we'll hit camp for the real work. And... I think I'll say goodnight, Mother. What's the hurry, sir? Well, I, I have to get up early for school. Oh. Are you coming up, Mother? In a few minutes, dear. What's the matter with him? Nothing. King, I usually read to him for a few minutes while he dozes off. Why don't you do it tonight, hmm? Me? Uh-huh. All right. I guess I can get away with it. Black cavalry was not disappointed. My... Mine... Mine here? Mine here, Van Gen readily procured good horses and all the boys could ride. Though none was as perfect a horseman as Peter and Ben. They saw the... The... The Hague? Yeah. They saw the Hague to their heart's content. And... I'm not so hot in the reading, am I? Oh, you're fine, sir. Why don't you call me Dad? I thought we'd agreed on that. I try to, sir, but... You don't like me, do you? Please, would you ask... What's the matter with me? I'm your father. I'm... Oh, please ask Mother to come in. All right. I'll go get her. King, is he asleep? You didn't read very long. He wants you. Why? Because... It... Oh, what's the use? I try and I can't get anywhere near him. My own kid. He's only a child. He's, he's shy because he doesn't... See you very often. That's not it. He hates me. What do people say in this house that makes him hate me? King. I can feel it. I can feel it with you, too, like whispering behind my back. What's the matter with you? Decided after ten years you're too good for the guy you married? I hope your son didn't hear you say that. My son. He can't even call me dad. And whose fault is that? Mine, I suppose. That's what I get for all these years pounding my heart out in the sticks. You're not talking sense. I'm saying what I feel. That kid's speaking for all of you. He doesn't know me and he doesn't want to know me. He's ashamed of me. All right, have it your own way. But how can a child learn to love a father he sees once in six months? I'm doing the only thing I can do. Yes, for yourself. You had enough money five years ago. You could have come home then and let your son know you and love you. But you wouldn't quit because you promised yourself to achieve something regardless of us. What do you want me to do? Quit now that I've signed for the biggest fight of my life? Oh, do what you want. When you don't expect us to crawl to you on our hands and knees just because you dropped by on your way to the championship. We don't care whether you're champion or not. I figured it was like that. All right. Where are you going? I'm going back where you found me. To a place where my talk, people talk my own language. Where a man can be himself with his own people and not worry what they're thinking about. I'm sick and tired of trying to be something I'm not. Hey, 
in. Is that you? Yeah. Is that the waiter for me? I couldn't sleep. I wanted to see you. Well, take a good look. King, you're... I think you'd better go to bed. You didn't think I'd do it, did you? Yeah, and the band played Old King Cole, and I liked it. Good night, Jim. What do you think now about the guy you married? Let me go. Jimmy will hear you. I ask you what you thought. All that talk about waiting for me and my own kid not knowing me. That's not what's the matter with us. That's not what keeps eating inside you. You're hurting my arm. We know what's wrong, both of us. I told you the first night I met you. You're a lady saying I'm a tramp. I showed you tonight, too, didn't I? Say something to that. What should I say? That I hate you and I don't? All I know is that our marriage has gone on the rocks. And I had to stand and watch it crash because I didn't know what to do. You were in trouble tonight and you went right back to the people who knew you before I did. That meant a lot. Why couldn't I hold you tonight? You told me where I stood. I wanted to stay, but... But you left. And now, after waiting all these months to tell you how much I love you and missed you, I... I'm going up to my own room and lock the door. All oh, right. I'd like to talk some more. I'm all mixed up. I'm not. Good night. Oh, well, honey, wait a minute. <laughs> Mother. Oh, Jimmy. When did you wake up? I heard talking, Mother. Is it because of me what I said to him? Oh, no, darling, no. It's because of me, dear. I failed, Jimmy. I failed. The curtain falls on Act Two of our play. In the third act, King Cole continues his quest of the championship and makes a great decision. During this brief intermission, an invitation to happiness. Here's a gentleman with a personal invitation for you. Fred McMurray and Madeline Carroll will return for Act Three in just a moment. The other day, an investigator was talking to a housewife. The minute Lux Toilet Soap was mentioned, the housewife said, Lux Toilet Soap? Oh, we use it all the time. The whole family uses it. I buy it a dozen cakes at a time. I use it for my complexion, of course. And my whole family loves Lux Toilet Soap for their baths because it gives such wonderful lather. Yes, that's the way people who use Lux Toilet Soap feel about it. They love its creamy, active lather. They love the gentle, thorough way it cleanses. In fact, it's so popular that an active lather bath at the end of the day is a family habit in millions of homes. Women like the way active lather protects the most important charm of all, daintiness. They know that a daily Lux Soap beauty bath makes them sure of skin that's sweet. And men like it because with Lux, they can get a lot of lather, and they get it quickly for a bath that makes them feel good as new on top of the world. And don't think that wives don't know that, Mr. Roik. That's why the clever ones are always sure to have plenty of Lux toilet soap on hand. Yes, an active lather bath is a thorough bath. It carries away perspiration, every trace of dust and dirt. Lux soap is as fine a soap as money can buy. Yet, because millions of cakes are sold, you can buy Lux Toilet Soap for very little. I hope you will buy it and let your whole family enjoy the luxury of using this fine white soap every day. We pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Continue with Act Three of Invitation to Happiness. Several weeks have passed. Jim and Eleanor meet for the first time since their separation in a divorce court. The problem before the presiding judge is the custody of the boy, Jimmy. And I have therefore reached this decision. James Cole, the child, is in your custody, effective as of today, for a period of six months. Thereafter, Eleanor Wayne Cole, for the ensuing six months, you are your son's custodian. After which period, the child himself shall choose which parent he shall remain with permanently. It is my fervent hope that before this decree becomes final, you two parents will have reached a more pleasant solution of your difficulties. That is all. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Will the counsel please remain? Uh, certainly, Your Honor. Uh, good day, Mrs. Cole. Oh, Eleanor, wait. Yes? I, I hope you understand why I asked for the boy. To, well, to make him see that I love him just as much as you do and want him just as much. I understand. Don't you think it's a little late to try and prove that? I'll pack his things and send him to your hotel. Six months with your father. After that, you come back to Grandpa Wayne and me. Then you decide for yourself. But, Mother, why can't I... Look, dear, see if you're a strong enough man to close that suitcase, will you? Why can't I tell the judge that I want to stay with you? Can I explain to him, please? Yes, but that wouldn't be fair. You must give your father a chance. I won't. I'll, I'll run away. Jimmy, is, is that your way of helping? I want you to promise me something, Jimmy. What? Go to your father remembering that it's natural and right for you to love him. The way you feel now is wrong. You've built a wall around yourself that's hurt him terribly. I love him, but I can't do anything to help him as long as he feels the way he does. You're the only one. It's all my fault, isn't it? No, don't think that. Just promise that you'll help us all by, by giving him a chance. Uh, I'll try. Thank you, darling. You'll probably find that your father is a very wonderful man. I did, a long time ago. <laughs> Come in, Jimmy. Well, uh, better get that coat off, huh? Thank you. That's good to see you, Jimmy. Well, uh, is there anything you want, like a sandwich or a soda or something? No, thanks. Oh, I, I almost forgot. See over there, the, that football suit's for you and the motorbike and the whole works. That's wonderful. And you know who we're going to see tomorrow? Dutch Arnold, the greatest pro football player in the country. Really? Yeah, I, I saw his picture in your room at, at home. and We're going to be his guest at the game tomorrow. We'll sit right with the squad on the bench. How do you like them apples? Very nice of you. Yeah, we're going to have some great times together, aren't we, Jimmy? Yes, sir, but... <laughs> oh, gee. All right, son. Go ahead. You miss her, too. I understand. Uh, I'll be all right, Dad. Sure you will. We're going to be a great pair, you and me. Hello, Jimmy. Oh, hello, Dad. Hey, look busy. Yeah, I'm writing a letter to Mother. Oh. Uh, want me to see if I can dig up a stamp for you? It's all right. Mother gave me some. Uh -huh. Oh, how's everything going to school? Pretty good. That's fine. Say, uh, I figured maybe tomorrow we could go riding in Central Park if you want. We might even start looking around for your own pony, huh? My own pony? Say, that'd be swell. Maybe this afternoon, huh? Wait till I tell the kids at school about this. Especially Pinky Muffet. He thinks he's so much. Almost had a fight with him today. Right, huh? What about? Well, he was with some of his friends. And he said you'd never be champion of the world if you lived a million years. Oh, he did, huh? I stuck up for you, though. I said you'd knock that other fella flat in two rounds. Maybe one. And you will, too, won't you? Sure I will. We'll sure show old Pinky Muffet, won't we, Dad? Yeah. We'll sure show Pinky. Hello? Hello. Oh, uh, hello, Eleanor. Well, we... Well, not exactly. Why? I'd like to see him so much. It'd mean a lot to me. Well, uh, yeah, I guess that'd be all right. Oh, that's grand of you. May I send the car to pick him up in half an hour? Oh, sure. Sure. Thanks again. Goodbye. Goodbye, Eleanor. Would you like to spend the afternoon with your money, Mother Jimmy? Oh, yes. That'd be great. She's sending the car for you. I better get ready right away. Well, hey, take it easy. I won't be here for a half an hour. Oh, but I better be downstairs so I won't miss it. Yeah, well... Uh, tell your mother hello for me, will you? I will, and I'll tell her all the things I just wrote in the letter. About the pony, too. Have a good time, Jimmy. Okay, thanks. Hey, King, where have you been? Yeah? What's the matter with you? Oh, uh, nothing. Why? Look, fella, I haven't said anything before. You've had a lot on your mind. But it's about time you started training for this fight. Now, when are we leaving town? We're not leaving town. We're staying right here. Oh, King, you can't do it. This is the biggest fight in your life. You might just as well face it. You're no kid anymore. I know. I'm 30 years old. The fight game, that makes me an armchair cripple. Well, then why not go to camp for some real work? What do you say, huh? Can't you see what I'm up against, Hank? I can't take the kid out of school to go to camp, and if I leave him here, I'll lose him. I know that. So I stay right here with him. Okay. Okay. There goes your fight. Don't say that. It's a 
thing I'm counting on to make the kid proud of me, seeing me champ of the world. And it's going to happen. What a big hug. <laughs> My, but you're getting tall, Jimmy. Yes, sit down, Hart. Tell me what you've been doing. Oh, a lot of things. We went to the football game. Yes, I know. And we sat right on the players bench, me and Dad. Dad. Isn't that swell? You're having a good time, aren't you? Yes, very good. How is your dad? Fine. He's always asking me if there's something I'd like. He's very nice to me. I know he is. Does, does he ever mention me? Lots of times. It sort of slips out. What did he say? Just good things, and he quits talking for a while. Do you think he misses me a little? I guess he does. I know I do. I, I want to be with you, oh, Mother. Oh, don't. I I've tried to do what you told me about being fair, but at night I get so lonely. I, I can't stand it any longer. Jimmy, dear, listen. You've just told me that your father's do everything he can to make you happy, and, and I'm proud of the way you've acted so far. You mustn't give up now. This is my fault for asking to see you. We can't destroy what he's done. Why do you always tell me to try and let him keep me? Mother, don't you want me anymore? Oh, please, please, Jimmy, don't. I got your message, Mrs. Paul. Sit down, Hank. I know you're very busy, but I wanted to speak to you. Hank, I'm worried about... About Jim. No more than I am. All these things I've been reading in the paper, are they true? Well, physically, he was never in better shape. Then what is the matter? The way his mind is. All keyed up about holding on to the boy. Can't even think about the fight. He should have gone to training camp. Did he give that up to stay with Jimmy? Yeah. He's ruining his chances. You've got to plan your moves. Be ready for surprises. Know where you're going every second. If you don't, you're licked. Could that happen to him? Yes, it could, the way he is now. What are your plans if he loses? I don't know. Just quit, I guess. He wouldn't fight after that. And do you think Jimmy will come back to me when the six months are up? Yes, I think he will. So do I. That leaves King alone. Just when he's lost everything. That can't happen to him. It mustn't happen to him. Well, I didn't know you felt that way about it. He mustn't go to pieces, Hank. We can't let him lose. You, you've got to make him win. Well, I'm trying. And I'll try twice as hard now for you. But he's still the man in the ring. And now they're getting final instructions from the referee. The crowd's on edge, waiting to see fight history made. Can King Cole do what few men have done in the ring? Can a man who has fought 11 years win the championship in his 30s? Fight experts say not. But nearest is King Cole's 10-year-old boy sitting at the ringside. And if a boy can make a wish come true for his dad, there'll be a new champion tonight. Now they're going back to the court. You gotta remember what I told you. Keep moving, see? Sure, Hank, sure. And if you get in the jam, don't be afraid to cover up. Cover up? With the kid out there watching me? Don't worry, Hank. I could win tonight with one hand. I got something to fight for now. And there's the bell! Cole came out of his corner fast and backs the champ against the ropes. He swings a long right to the head. The champ covers quickly and shoots a short left to the chin. And Cole is in there again with a looping left to the head and a short right that takes the champ by surprise. He's shooting him fast now from all angles. And the champ goes into a clinch. Cole's trying hard to break. Seems to be trying for a quick knockout. Now they're out of the clinch and the champ is moving faster. Cole's strategy may work, but if it doesn't, he's taking a very long chance. There's 14 rounds to go, and anything can happen. Listen, King, you're taking too many chances. All through that round, you left yourself wide open. You're not fighting your fight. I know what I'm doing. But you're not doing what we planned. This is working better. I'll take him in the next round. Champ's not swinging wildly anymore, just landing solid blows to the body and head. He's cool and collected now, and Cole apparently can't get past his guard. There go two quick lefts to Cole's head, a right to the stomach, another right, and Cole is down! He's down! Four, five, six, he's up again, he's on his feet, but a little groggy. And now the champ is moving in, a right and a left, another right, another right. It's the end of the fifth round, and Cole hasn't been able to land a solid punch since he had the champion on the run in the first. And he's been taking a terrible beating the last three rounds. Hard lefts to his head, crushing blows at his midsection. And there's a touching bit of drama here tonight, folks. 
Cole seems to keep looking down at his son at the ringside, trying to tell the youngster everything's all right. The boy seems to be taking every punch with his father. Folks, I'm watching one of the gamest fighters in ring history tonight. King Cole has been knocked down eight times in eight rounds, and he's still fighting. His trainer has been pleading with him to quit, but he won't admit he's beaten. Right now, he's swinging wildly, trying hard to land. The champ steps in, shoots a terrific right to Cole's jaw, and Cole is down again. He's down in a neutral corner, trying to pull himself up from the rope. Hey, hey, hey. Come on up. All right, now come on, come on, come on. It's all over. That's a boy. It's all over, all right. That's right, son. Don't let the kid see me, Hank. Don't let him see me. All right, now, all right. Take it easy, take it easy. I've lost it, Hank. Don't talk now. Just lie quiet. I've lost my son. Keep that door shut. Jimmy. Oh, Hank, get him out. Hello, Jimmy. Dad, Dad, I know how much you wanted to win, but please don't feel so terrible about losing. You did the best you could, and there's nothing to be ashamed of. Thanks, son. And, and the reason I came down here is, is to tell you that, that I've decided to stay with you. With me? Yes, Dad. Did you hear that, Pop? He wants to stay with me. Did you hear, Hank? Yeah, I heard. Why, son? Why did you decide that? Because I want to. No, no, no. Go on, tell me why. Because, because well, you'll be all alone. You've got to have somebody now. I think you need me. Thanks, son. You've made things a lot easier for me. I know now what I'm going to do. Hello, lady. I thought I'd find you up here, on your private bench. Let me see you. Are you hurt badly? No, not bad. I just wanted to thank you for bringing Jimmy back to me. Uh, it's all right. Why did you do it? I don't know. Except that tonight he showed me that he has something and you have something that I'll never have. I mean, some of us are fine people and some of us are just plain no good. I couldn't keep him knowing he was so much your son and so little mine. That's all. Well. How did it feel, losing tonight? I was ashamed for a while, but not anymore. He used to say that if you were ever really beaten as a fighter, you'd be afraid of what would happen to you after that. That was before I knew how it feels to lose. It's not bad. It's kind of good. Like a big load off my shoulders. And you made a sacrifice tonight, for the first time. No. I just saved the kid from it. You? You're feeling sorry for me, lady, and you and I don't like that, do we? Well, good night. Good night. Mother, are you ready yet? Hey, what's this? Jimmy, go back to the car, dear. Hello, Dad. Are you ready yet, Dad? Ready? Come home with us. Mother said you might. Jimmy. She did? Yes. I said that I thought you needed it. And she said, well, she said that it was us who needed you. And I think she's right. Well, guess I'll wait in the car. Lady, did you really say that? Yes. And you're not afraid that, that we're... Heading for trouble again? No. I still think that you're worth waiting for. Oh, lady. Lady.
Spider King Cole has hung up the gloves. Fred McMurray and Madeline Carroll return to the footlights and our microphone. Uh, shall I say it now, Madeline? I think you better ask Mr. DeMille. Oh, uh, later, I think, Fred. <laughs> oh. Just now, I'd like to ask you to explain it, an item called skeet shooting. I understand you rate as a champion in skeet councils, too. <laughs> kind of... Kind of a silly sound of sport, isn't it? No, I don't think so at all. I think shooting clay pigeons instead of real birds is, is much more sensible. Well, it's, it's really a pretty good sport. You see, there's a machine that throws the clay bird up in the air very much the way a real bird would rise from the ground. Hmm. And then all you have to do is to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> there's a rumor that our Mr. McMurray once made a perfect score. Something like a, a hundred hits out of a possible hundred. Yeah, it sounded like an impossible hundred until I saw the official score. What were you using, Fred? An anti-aircraft gun? <laughs> well, a score like that ours is kind of an accident with me, Mr. DeMille. But uh, shall I say it now, Madeline? Uh, not yet, Fred. You know, I've always admired people who are good at things like that. Personally, I'm a duffer at all sports. In fact, my dog doesn't even think I can take him for a walk satisfactorily. Well, must be a pretty fussy dog. <laughs> He's a police dog, very highly trained. A friend of mine just gave him to me. He heals perfectly, but I'm not used to such an educated dog. During our first walk together, I think I fell on my face five times. <laughs> and each time I got such a pitying look from the dog. There seems to be a complicated set of signals that he knows and I don't. <laughs> perhaps your friend should have sent a book of instructions with the dog. <laughs> or perhaps I should have gone to the same school that he did. Oh. You know, a school for dog owners might not be a bad idea. But before we go, Mr. DeMille, I want to say something about the product behind this program. There are some things a woman has to be pretty serious about and and one of them is her complexion and her complexion soap. I use Lux soap regularly. I like it better than any other soap I've ever tried. It certainly helps to keep one's skin soft and smooth. And now, Mr. DeMille, what can Lux Radio Theater fans look forward to next week? Next Monday night, Madeline, we're going to present Loretta Young and Miriam Hopkins. And our play is the recent success, The Old Maid. Pulitzer Prize winner on Broadway and now a distinguished motion picture. It's a story about a woman who makes the greatest sacrifice any woman can make for her child. The sacrifice of never being known to the child as its mother. Yes, it's a fine play, C.B., the kind people remember. But uh, don't you think it's about time for me to say it? Yes, Fred, I, I think it is. <laughs> okay, here you go. Hello, Mom, it was a tough fight. I'll be right home. So long, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. That was a championship performance. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Loretta Young and Miriam Hopkins in The Old Maid. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. This is Melville Roy, asking you to be sure to listen to the Lux Daytime program, The Life and Love of Dr. Susan. This human and gripping story of a young, attractive woman doctor is brought to you every afternoon, Monday through Friday. For the time and station, see your newspaper. The Life and Love of Dr. Susan comes to you in addition to the Lux Radio Theater. Heard in tonight's play, where Cy Kendall as Hank Hardy, Harry Humphrey as Mr. Wayne, and Eric Burtis as Jimmy. Fred McMurray and Madeline Carroll are currently appearing in the Paramount picture, Honeymoon in Ballet. Mr. McMurray is now making Little Old New York at 20th Century Fox, and Miss Carroll soon starts work in Paramount's Safari. The picture, Invitation to Happiness, is a current Paramount success. Louis Silvers is from 20th Century Fox, where he directed music for Hollywood Cavalcade. Our sponsors join me in calling your attention to a special event this week, the annual Mobilization for Human Needs. In democratic America, mobilization is against poverty, disease, and suffering. Your contribution to your community chest is the democratic way of being a good American and a good neighbor. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.